Billy Venero, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. Billy Venero heard them say in an Arizona town one day that a band of Apache Indians were upon the trail of death. Heard them tell of murder done, three men killed at Rocky Run. They're in danger at the cow ranch, said Venero under breath. Cow Ranch, forty miles away, was a little place that lay in a deep and shady valley of the mighty wilderness. Half a score of homes were there, and in one a maiden fair held the heart of Billy Venero, Billy Venero's little Bess. So no wonder he grew pale when he heard the cowboy's tale of the men that he'd seen murdered the day before at Rocky Run. Sure as there's a God above, I will save the girl I love. By my love for little Bessie, I will see that something's done. Not a moment he delayed when his brave resolve was made. Why, man, his comrades told him when they heard of his daring plan. You are riding straight to death, but he answered, save your breath. I may never reach the cow branch, but I'll do the best I can. As he crossed the alkali, all his thoughts flew on ahead to the little band at Cow Ranch, thinking not of danger near. With his quirt's unceasing whirl and the jingle of his spurs, little brown chapel boy the cowboy o'er the faraway frontier. Lower and lower sank the sun, he drew rain at Rocky Run. Here those men met death, my chapo, and he stroked his glossy mane. So shall those we go to warn, ere the coming of the morn, if we fail, God help my Bessie, and he started on again. Sharp and clear, a rifle shot woke the echoes of the spot. I am wounded, cried Venero, as he swayed from side to side. While there's life, there's always hope, slowly onward I will lope. If I fail to reach the cow ranch, Bessie Lee shall know I tried. I will save her yet, he cried, Bessie Lee shall know I tried, and for her sake then he halted in the shadow of a hill. From his chaparreras he took with weak hands a little book, tore a blankly from its pages, saying, This shall be my will. From a limb a penny broke, and he dipped his pen of oak in the warm blood that was spurting from a wound above his heart. Rouse, he wrote before too late, Apache warriors lie in wait. Good-bye, Bess, God bless you, darling, and he felt the cold tears start. Then he made his message fast, love's first message and its last. To the saddle horn he tied it, and his lips were white with pain. Take this message, if not me, straight to little Bessie Lee. Then he tied himself to the saddle, and he gave his horse the rein. Just at dusk a horse of brown, wet with sweat, came panting down. The little lane at the cow ranch stopped in front of Bessie's door. But the cowboy was asleep, and his slumbers were so deep, little Bess could never wake him, though she tried forevermore. You have heard the story told by the young and by the old, away down yonder at the cow ranch, the night the Apaches came. Of that sharp and bloody fight, how the chief fell in the fight, and the panic-stricken warriors when they heard Venero's name. And the heavens and earth between keep a little flower so green that little Bess had planted ere they laid her by his side. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dogie Song, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Tim Watkins. The cow bosses are good-hearted chunks, some short, some heavy, more long. But don't matter what he looks like, they all sing the same old song. On the plains, in the mountains, in the valleys, in the south where the days are long, the bosses are different fellows, still they sing the same old song. Sift along, boys, don't ride so slow. Haven't got much time, but a long round to go. Quirt him in the shoulders and rake him down the hip. I've cut your toppy mounts, boys, now pair off and rip. Bunch the herd at the old meat. 
then beat em on the tail. Whip em up and down the sides, and hit the shortest trail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tim Watkins. The Boozer, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. I'm a howler from the prairies of the West. If you want to die with terror, look at me. I'm chain lightning. If I ain't, may I be blessed. I'm the snorter of the boundless prairie. He's a killer and a hater. He's the great annihilator. He's a terror of the boundless prairie. I'm the snoozer from the upper trail. I'm the reveler in murder and in gore. I can bust more Pullman coaches on the rail than anyone who's worked the job before. He's a snorter and a snoozer. He's the great trunk line abuser. He's the man who puts the sleeper on the rail. I'm the double-jawed hyena from the east. I'm the blazing bloody blizzard of the states. I'm the celebrated slugger. I'm the beast. I can snatch a man bald-headed while he waits. He's a double-jawed hyena. He's the villain of the Cena. He can snatch a man bald-headed while he waits. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Drinking Song, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. Drink that rot gut, drink that rot gut, drink that red-eye boys. It don't make a damn wherever we land, we hit her up for joy. We've lived in the saddle and ridden trail, drink old Jordan boys. We'll go whooping and yelling, we'll all go a-helling, drink her to our joy. Whoopee! Drink that rot gut, drink that red nose whenever you get to town. Drink it straight and swig it mighty till the world goes round and round. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Fragment Collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I'd rather hear a rattler rattle, I'd rather buck stampeding cattle, I'd rather go to the greaser battle, than, than to, than to fight, than to fight the bloody Indians. I'd rather eat a pan of dope, I'd rather ride without a rope, I'd rather from this country lope than, than to, than to fight, than to fight the bloody Indians. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Man Called Hodge, collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Lowell Moore, October twentieth, two 2017, in Lake Helen, Florida. Come all, you old cow punchers, a story I will tell. And if you'll all be quiet, I sure will sing it well. And if you boys don't like it, you sure can go to hell. Back in the day when I was young, I knew a man named Hodge. He wasn't fit for nothing except turning up the clods, but he came west in 53 behind a pair of mules, and twas hard to tell between the three which was the biggest fools. Up on the plains, old Hodge he got, and there his trouble began. Oh, he sure did get in trouble, and old Hodge wasn't no man. He met a bunch of Indian bucks led by Geronimo, and what them Indians did to him, well, surely I don't know. But they lifted off old Hodsey's scalp and left him out to die, and if it hadn't been for me, he'd have been in the sweet by and by. But I packed him back to Santa Fe, and there I found his mules. For them dad blamed two critters had got the Indians fooled. I don't know how they done it, but they sure did get away, 
and them two mules is living up to this very day. Old Hodgie's feet got toughened up, and he got to be a sport. He opened up a gambling house and a place of low resort. He got the prettiest dancing girls that ever could be found. Them girls' feet was like rubber balls. They never stayed on the ground. And then there came Billy the Kid. He envied Hodgie's wealth. He told old Hodge to leave the town. T'would be better for his health. Old Hodgie took the hint and got, but he carried all his wealth. And he went back to New York State with lots of dinero. And now they say he's senator. But of that, I sure don't know. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lowell Moore from Lake Helen, Florida. A fragment collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I am fur from my sweetheart, and she is fur from me. And when I'll see my sweetheart, I can't tell when twill be. But I love her just the same no matter where I roam, and that there girl will wait for me whenever I come home. I've roamed the Texas prairies, I've followed the cattle trail, I've rid a pitching pony till the hair came off his tail. I've been to cowboy dances, I've kissed the Texas girls, but they ain't none that can compare with my own sweetheart's curls. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lone Star Trail, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. The Lone Star Trail. I'm a rowdy cowboy just off the stormy plains. My trade is girting saddles and pulling bridle reins. Oh, I can tip the lasso. It is with graceful ease. I rope a streak of lightning and ride it where I please. My bosses, they all like me. They say I am hard to beat. I give them the bold standoff. You bet I've got the cheek. I always work for wages, my pay I get in gold. I'm bound to follow the longhorn steer until I am too old. ki yip 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 yay I am a Texas cowboy, and I do ride the range. My trade is cinches and saddles, and ropes and bridle reins. With Stetson hat and jingling spurs and leather up to the knees, graybacks as big as chili beans, and fighting like hell with fleas. And if I had a little stake, I soon would married be. But another week and I must go, the bosses said so today. My girl must cheer up courage and choose some other one, for I am bound to follow the Lone Star Trail until my race is run. ki ya yip 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 ye It almost breaks my heart for to have to go away and leave my own little darling, my sweetheart, so far away. But when I'm out on the Lone Star Trail, often I'll think of thee, of my own dear girl and the darling one, the one I would like to see. And when I get to a shipping point, I'll get on a little spree to drive away the sorrow for the girl that once loved me. And though red liquor stirs us up when we're bound to have our fun, I intend to follow the Lone Star Trail until my race is run. ki ya yip 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 ye I went up the Lone Star Trail in 1883. I fell in love with a pretty little miss, and she in love with me. When you get to Kansas, write and let me know, and if you get in trouble, your bail I'll come and go. When I got up in Kansas, I had a pleasant dream. I dreamed I was down on Trinity, down on that pleasant stream. I dreamt my true love right beside me. She come to go my bail. I woke up broken-hearted with a yearling by the tail. ki ya yip 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 ye In come my jailer, about nine o'clock. A bunch of keys was in his hand, my cell door to unlock, saying, Cheer up, my prisoner. I heard some voice say, You're bound to hear your sentence sometime today. In came my mother, about ten o'clock, saying, Oh, my Johnny, what sentence have you got? The jury found me guilty, and the judge is standing by, has sent me down to Huntsville to lock me up and die. ki yip 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 Down come the jailer, 
just about eleven o'clock with a bunch of keys all in his hand the cell doors to unlock saying cheer up my prisoner i heard the jury say just ten long years in huntsville you're bound to go and stay down come my sweetheart ten dollars in her hand saying give this to my cowboy tis all that i command oh give this to my cowboy and think of olden times think of the darling that he has left behind kai ya yip 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 yay end of poem this recording is in the public domain way down in mexico collected by john lomax read for LibriVox.org by philip gould o oh boys we're going far tonight yo ho yo ho We'll take the greasers now in hand and drive em in the Rio Grande, way down in Mexico. We'll hang old Santa Anna soon, yo ho, yo ho. And all the greaser soldiers too, to the tune of Yankee Doodle Doo, way down in Mexico. We'll scatter em like flocks of sheep, yo ho, yo ho. We'll mow em down with rifle ball and plant our flag right on their wall, way down in Mexico. Old rough and ready, he's a trump, yo ho, yo ho. He'll wipe old Santa Anna out and put the greasers all to rout way down in Mexico. Then we'll march back by and by, yo ho, yo ho, and kiss the gals we left to home and never more we'll go and roam way down in Mexico. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rattlesnake, a ranch haying song collected by john lomax read for LibriVox.org by philip gould a nice young mawawan lived on a hill will will a nice young mawawan for i knew him well 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 to my rattle to my roo ra ri this nice young mawawan went out to mo wo wo to see if he wee wee could make a show wo wo to my rattle to my roo ra ri he scarcely mo wo woed half round the fee we wheeled till up jumped come a rattle come a snay way wake and bid him on the he we wheel to my rattle to my roo ra ri he laid right down we wound upon the grow wow wound and shut his eye wi wise and looked all a row wow wound to my rattle to my roo ra ri o oh, pappy da wow wed go tell my gow wow wow that I'm going to die, why, why, for I know I shall, wow, wow. To my rattle, to my roo ra ri. O oh, pappy, da, wow, wed, go spread the new woo woos, and here comes so, wa wa, without her shoe woo woos. To my rattle, to my roo ra ri. O oh, John, o oh, ja, wa wan, why did you go, wo wo, way down in the meh wa wa do, so far to mo wo wo. To my rattle, to my roo ra ri. O oh, sal, o oh, sal, wow, wow. Why don't you know, wo, wo? When the grass gets wry, wi wi, it must be mo, wo, wo. To my rattle, to my roo ra ri. Come all young gir wo whirls, and shed a tear, we we For this young ma wow wan, that died right here, we we To my rattle, to my roo ra ri. Come all young me wa wan, and warning te wa wa. And don't get beer we wit by rattle snay we we. To my rattle, to my roo ra ri. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Railroad Corral, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Rick of Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, we're up in the morning, air breaking of day, the chuck wagon's busy, the flapjacks in play. The herd is astir o'er hillside and vale, with the night riders rounding them into the trail. Oh, come take up your cinches, come shake out your reins, come wake your old bronco and break for the plains. Come roust out your steers from the long chaparral, for the outfit is off to the railroad corral. The sun circles upward, the steers as they plod, are pounding to powder the hot prairie sod. And it seems as the dust makes you dizzy and sick that we'll never reach noon in the cool, shady crick. But tie up your kerchief and ply up your nag. Come dry up your grumbles and try not to lag. 
Come with your steers from the long chaparral, for we're far on the road to the railroad corral. The afternoon shadows are starting to lean when the chuck wagon sticks in the marshy ravine. The herd scatters farther than vision can look, for you can bet all true punchers will help out the cook. Come shake out your rawhide and snake it up fair. Come break your old bronco to take in his share. Come from your steers in the long chaparral, for tis all in the drive to the railroad corral. But the longest of days must reach evening at last. The hills all climbed, the creeks all passed. The tired herd droops in the yellowing light. Let them loaf if they will, for the railroad's in sight. So flap up your holster and snap up your belt, and strap up your saddle whose lap you have felt. Goodbye to the steers from the long chaparral, for there's a town that's a trunk by the railroad corral. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Song of the Matisse Trapper, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hurrah for the Great White Way! Hurrah for the dog and sledge! As we snowshoe along, we give them a song, with a snap of the whip and an urgent mush on. Hurrah for the Great White Way! Hurrah! Hurrah for the snow and the ice! As we follow the trail, we call to the dogs with whistle and song, and reply to their talk with only mush on, mush on. Hurrah for the snow and the ice. Hurrah! Hurrah for the gun and the trap, as we follow the lines by the rays of the mystic light that flames in the north with banners so bright, as we list to its swish, swish, swish through the air all night. Hurrah for the gun and the trap! Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah! Hurrah for the fire and cold, as we lie in the robes all night, and list to the howl of the wolf, for we emptied the pot of the tea so hot, and a king on his throne might envy our lot. Hurrah for the fire and cold! Hurrah! Hurrah for our black-haired girls, who brave the storms of the mountain heights, and follow us on the great white way, for their eyes so bright light the way all right, and guide us to shelter and warmth each night. Hurrah for our black-haired girls! Hurrah! 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 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Campfire Has Gone Out, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Bristol Chilton, on November 3rd, 2017. Through progress of the railroads our occupations gone, so we will put ideas into words, our words into a song. First comes the cowboy, he is pointed for the west. Of all the pioneers I claim the cowboys are the best. You will miss him on the roundup, it's gone his merry shout. The cowboy has left the country, and the campfire has gone out. There is the freighters, our companions, you've got to leave this land. Can't drag your loads for nothing through the gumbo and the sand. The railroads are bound to beat you when you do your level best, so give it up to the grangers and strike out for the west. Bid them all adieu and give the merry shout. The cowboy has left the country, and the campfire has gone out. When I think of those good old days, my eyes with tears do fill. When I think of the tin can by the fire and the coyote on the hill. I'll tell you, boys, in those days, old-timers stood a show. Our pockets full of money, not a sorrow did we know. But things have changed now. We are poorly clothed and fed. Our wagons are all broken, and our ponies most all dead. Soon we will leave this country. You'll hear the angels shout, Oh, here they come to heaven. The campfire has gone out. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night Herding Song, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. Night Herding Song, by Harry Stevens. Oh, slow up, dogies, quit your roving around. You have wandered and tramped all over the ground. 
oh graze along doggies and feed kind of slow and don't forever be on the go oh move slow doggies move slow hi oh hi oh 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 i have circle herded trail herded night herded and cross herded too but to keep you together that's what i can't do my horse is leg weary and i'm awful tired but if i let you get away i'm sure to get fired bunch up little doggies bunch up hi oh hi oh 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 say little doggies when you gonna lay down and quit this forever sifting around my limbs are weary my seat is sore oh lay down doggies like you've laid before lay down little doggies lay down hi oh hi oh 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 lay still doggies since you have laid down stretch away out on the big open ground snore loud little doggies and drown the wild sound that will all go away when the day rolls around lay still little doggies lay still hi oh hi oh 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 end of poem this recording is in the public domain Tailpiece, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. Oh, the cowpuncher loves the whistle of his rope as he races over the plains, and the stage driver loves the popper of his whip and the rattle of his conquered chains. And we'll all pray the Lord that we will be saved and will keep the golden rule. But I'd rather be home with the girl I love than to monkey with this goddamn mule. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Habit, collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. I've beat my way wherever any winds have blown. I've bummed along from Portland down to San Antone. From Sandy Hook to Frisco, over Gulch and Hill. For once you get the habit, why you can't keep still i settles down quite frequent and i says says i i'll never wander further till i comes to die but the wind it sort of chuckles why oh of course you will and sure enough i does it cause i can't keep still i've seed a lot o places where i'd like to stay but i gets a feelin restless and i'm on my way i was never meant for settin on my own door sill and once you get the habit why you can't keep still i've been in richmond's houses and i've been in jail but when it's time for leaving i just hits the trail i'm a human bird of passage and the song i trill is once you get the habit why you can't keep still the sun is sort of coaxin and the road is clear and the wind is singin ballads that I got to hear. It ain't no use to argue when you feel the thrill, for once you get the habit, why you can't keep still. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Old Paint, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma old paint goodbye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne goodbye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne my foot in the stirrup my pony won't stand goodbye old paint i'm a leavin cheyenne i'm a leavin cheyenne i'm off for montan goodbye old paint I'm a leavin Cheyenne. I'm a ridin' old paint. I'm a leadin' old fan. Goodbye, old paint. I'm a leavin Cheyenne. With my feet in the stirrups, my bridle in my hand. Goodbye, old paint. I'm a leavin Cheyenne. Old paint's a good pony. He paces when he can. Goodbye, little Annie. I'm off for Cheyenne. Oh, hitch up your horses and feed em some hay and seat yourself by me so long as you stay. 
My horses ain't hungry, they'll not eat your hay. My wagon is loaded and rolling away. My foot in my stirrup, my reins in my hand. Good morning, young lady, my horses won't stand. Goodbye, old paint, I'm a leaving Cheyenne. Goodbye, old paint, I'm a leaving Cheyenne. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Down South on the Rio Grande. Collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. From way down south on the Rio Grande, roll on steers for the post oak sand. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! You'd laugh for to see that fellow a straddle of a Mustang mare on a rawhide saddle. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! Rich as a king, and he wouldn't be bigger for a pitchin' hoss and a lame old nigger. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! Old Abe kept gettin' bigger and bigger till he bust his south bout a lame old nigger. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! Old Jeff swears he'll sew him together with powder and shot instead of leather. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! Can cuss and fight and hold or free em, but I know them mavericks when I see em. Way down south in Dixie, oh boys, ho! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Silver Jack Collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. I was on the drive in 80, working under Silver Jack, which the same is now in Jackson and ain't soon expected back. And there was a fella amongst us by the name of Robert Waite, kind of cute and smart and tonguey, guess he was a graduate. He could talk on any subject from the Bible down to Hoyle, and his words flowed out so easy, just as smooth and slick as oil. He was what they call a skeptic, and he loved to sit and weave highfalutin' words together, telling what he didn't believe. One day we were all sittin' round, smokin' niggerhead tobacco, and hearin' Bob expound, hell, he said, was all a humbug, and he made it plain as day that the Bible was a fable, and we loud it looked that way. Miracles and such like were too rank for him to stand, and as for him they called the Savior, he was just a common man. You're a liar, someone shouted, and you gotta take it back. Then everybody started, twas the words of Silver Jack, and he cracked his fists together, and he stacked his duds and cried, Twas in that thar religion that my mother lived and died. And though I haven't always used the Lord exactly right, yet when I hear a chump abuse him, he's gotta eat his words or fight. Now, this Bob, he weren't no coward, and he answered bold and free. Stack your duds and cut your capers, for there ain't no flies on me. And they fit for forty minutes, and the crowd would whoop and cheer when Jack spit up a tooth or two, or when Bobby lost an ear. But at last Jack got him under, and he slugged him once or twice, and straightway Bob admitted the divinity of Christ. But Jack kept reasoning with him, till the poor cuss gave a yell, and loud he'd been mistaken in his views concerning hell. Then the fierce encounter ended, and they riz up from the ground, and someone brought a bottle out and kindly passed it round. And we drank to Bob's religion in a cheerful sort of way, but the spread of infidelity was checked in camp that day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cowboy's Christmas Ball Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Cowboy's Christmas Ball Way out in western Texas, where the clear fork's waters flow, where the cattle are a-browsin' and the Spanish ponies grow, where the northers come a-whistlin' from beyond the neutral strip, 
and the prairie dogs are sneezin as though they had the grip where the coyotes come a howlin round the ranches after dark and the mockin birds are singin to the lovely meadow lark where the possum and the badger and the rattlesnakes abound and the monstrous stars are winkin o'er a wilderness profound where lonesome tawny prairies melt into airy streams while the double mountains slumber in heavenly kinds of dreams where the antelope is grazin and the lonely plovers call it was there i attended the cowboy's christmas ball the town was anson city old jones's county seat where they raise polled angus cattle and waving whiskered wheat where the air is soft and bammy and dry and full of health where the prairies is explodin with agricultural wealth where they print the texas western that heck mccann supplies with news and yarns and stories of most amazing size where frank smith pulls the badger on knowing tender feet and democracy's triumphant and mighty hard to beat where lives that good old hunter john milsap from lamar who used to be the sheriff back east in paris sah twas there i say at anson with the lovely witter wall that i went to that reception the cowboy's christmas ball the boys had left the ranches and come to town in piles the ladies kinder scatterin had gathered in for miles and yet the place was crowded as i remember well twas gave on this occasion at the morning star hotel the music was a fiddle and a lively tambourine and a viol came imported by the stage from abilene the room was togged out gorgeous with mistletoe and shawls and the candles flickered festious around the airy walls the women folks looked lovely the boys looked kinder treed till the leader commenced yelling whoa fellers let's stampede and the music started sighing and a wailing through the hall as a kind of introduction to the cowboy's christmas ball the leader was a feller that came from swenson's ranch they called him windy billy from little deadman's branch his rig was kinder keerless big spurs and high-heeled boots he had the reputation that comes when fellers shoots his voice was like the bugle upon the mountain height his feet were animated in a mighty moving sight when he commenced to holler now fellers shake your pen lock horns tur all them heifers and rustle them like men salute your lovely critters nyow swing and let em go climb the grapevine round em nyow all hands do si do you maverick jine the roundup just skip the waterfall huh hit was gettin active the cowboy's christmas ball the boys was tolerable skittish the ladies powerful neat that old bass viol's music just got there with both feet that wailin frisky fiddle i never shall forget and windy kept a singin i think i hear him yet oh exes chase your squirrels and cut em to our side spur treadwell to the centre with cross p charlie's bride doc hollis down the centre and twine the ladies chain van andrews pen the fillies and big t diamond's train all pull your freight together nyow swallow fork and change big boston lead the trail herd through little pitchfork's range purr round your gentle pussies nyow rope and balance all ha huh, it were gettin active the cowboy's christmas ball the dust riz fast and furious we all just galloped round till the scenery got so giddy that t-bar dick was downed we buckled to our partners and told em to hold on then shook our hoofs like lightning until the early dawn don't tell me about cotillions or germans no siree that whirl at anson city just takes the cake with me i'm sick of lazy shufflins of them i've had my fill give me a frontier breakdown backed up by windy bill mcallister ain't nowhere when windy leads the show i've seen em both in harness 
and so I ought to know. Oh, Bill, I shan't forget yer, and I oftentimes recall that lively gated soiree, the cowboy's Christmas ball. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pinto, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I am a vaquero by trade. To handle my rope, I'm not afraid. I lass an otero by the two horns. Throw down the biggest that ever was born. Whoa, 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 pinto, whoa. My name to you I will not tell. For what's the use? You know me so well. The girls all love me and cry when I leave them to join the rodero. Whoa, 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 pinto, whoa. I am a vaquero, and here I reside. Show me the bronco I cannot ride. They say old Pinto with one split ear is the hardest jumping bronco on the rodero. Whoa, 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 Pinto, whoa. There strayed to our camp an iron gray colt. The boys were all afraid of him, so on him I bolt. You bet I stayed with him till cheer after cheer. He's the bronco twister that's on the rodero. Whoa, 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 Pinto, whoa. My story is ended, old Pinto is dead. I'm going down Laredo and paint the town red. I'm going up to Laredo and set up the beer to all the cowboys that's on the Rodero. Whoa, 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 Pinto, whoa. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Girl I Left Behind Me Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox Org by Wolfgang Boss The Girl I Left Behind Me I struck the trail in 79 The hearse ran out behind me As I jogged alone, my mind ran back For the girl I left behind me That sweet little girl, that true little girl The girl I left behind me if ever I got off the trail and the Indian they don't find me, I'll make my way straight back again to the girl I left behind me. That sweet little girl, that true little girl, the girl I left behind me. The wind did blow, the rain did flow, the hail did fall and blind me. I thought of the girl, that sweet little girl, the girl I left behind me. That sweet little girl, that true little girl, the girl I left behind me. She rode her head to the place I said, I was always glad to find her. She said, I'm true, when you get through, right back here you will find me. That sweet little girl, that true little girl, the girl I left behind me. When we sold out, I took the train, I knew where I would find her. When I got back, we had a smack, and that was no golden lie. That's where the little girl, that true little girl, the girl I left behind me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Billy the Kid, collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Cindy Tully. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Billy the Kid. Billy was a bad man and carried a big gun. He was always after greasers and kept them on the run. He shot one every morning for to make his morning meal and let a white man sass him. He was sure to feel his steel. He kept folks in hot water and he stole from many a stage, and when he was full of liquor, he was always in a rage. But one day he met a man who was a whole lot badder, and now he's dead, and we ain't none the sadder. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma.
The Hellbound Train, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. A Texas cowboy lay down on a barroom floor, having drunk so much he could drink no more. So he fell asleep with a troubled brain to dream that he rode on a hell-bound train. The engine with murderous blood was damp and was brilliantly lit with a brimstone lamp. An imp for fuel was shoveling bones while the furnace rang with a thousand groans. The boiler was filled with lager beer and the devil himself was the engineer. The passengers were a most motley crew, church member, atheist, gentile, and Jew. Rich men in broadcloth, beggars in rags, handsome young ladies and withered old hags, yellow and black men, red, brown, and white, all chained together. Oh, God, what a sight! While the train rushed on at an awful pace, the sulphurous fumes scorched their hands and face. Wider and wider the country grew, as faster and faster the engine flew. Louder and louder the thunder crashed, and brighter and brighter the lightning flashed. Hotter and hotter the air became, till the clothes were burnt from each quivering frame. And out of the distance there arose a yell. Ha ha, said the devil, we're nearing hell. Then, oh, how the passengers all shrieked with pain and begged the devil to stop the train. But he capered about and danced for glee and laughed and joked at their misery. My faithful friends, you've done the work and the devil never can a payday shirk. You've bullied the weak, you've robbed the poor, the starving brother you've turned from the door. You've laid up gold where the canker rust, and have given free vent to your beastly lust. You've justice scorned and corruption sown, and trampled the laws of nature down. You have drunk, rioted, cheated, plundered and lied, and mocked at God in your hell-born pride. You have paid full fare, so I'll carry you through, for it's only right you should have your due. Why, the laborer always expects his hire, so I'll land you safe in the lake of fire, where your flesh will waste and the flames that roar, and my imps torment you forevermore. Then the cowboy awoke with an anguished cry, his clothes wet with sweat and his hair standing high. Then he prayed as he never had prayed till that hour, to be saved from his sin and the demon's power and his prayers and his vows were not in vain, for he never rode the hell-bound train. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Scout's Lament Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schampf Come all of you, my brother scouts, and listen to my song. Come, let us sing together, though the shadows fall so long. Of all the old frontiersmen that used to scour the plain, there are but very few of them that with us yet remain. Day after day they're dropping off, they're going one by one. Our clan is fast decreasing, our race is almost run. There are many of our number that never wore the blue, but faithfully they did their part as brave men tried and true. They never joined the army, but had other work to do, in piloting the coming folks to help them safely through. But, brothers, we are failing, our race is almost run. The days of elk and buffalo and beaver traps are gone. Oh, the days of elk and buffalo, it fills my heart with pain, to know these days are past and gone, to never come again. We fought the redskin rascals over valley, hill, and plain, we fought him in the mountain top, we fought him down again. These fighting days are over, the Indian yell resounds no more along the border. Peace sends far sweeter sounds. But we found great joy, old comrades, to hear and make it die. We won bright homes for gentle ones, and now our West, goodbye.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Deserted Adobe Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Yan Yan Zen Round the adobe rank, sands are thickly blowing, Its ridges fill the deserted field. Yet on this claim young lives one's hope was sowing, For all the years might yield, And in strong hands the echoing hoof pursuing. A wooden shear turned up the sod. The toiler brave drank deep the fresh air's brewing and sang content to God. The toiler brave drank deep the fresh air's brewing and sang content to God. A woman fair and sweet has smiling striven through long and lonesome hours. A blue-eyed babe, a bit of earthly heaven, laughed at the sun's hot towers a bow of promise made this desert splendid this adobe was their pride but what began so well at last has ended the promise died but what began so well at last soon ended the promise died their plans and dreams their cheerful labor wasted in dry and misspent years. The spring was sweet, the summer bitter tasted, the autumn sought with tears. Now jip and sand do hide their one time yawning. Twas theirs, tis past. God's ways are strange. We take so long in learning to fail at last. God's ways are strange. We take so long in learning to fail at last. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cowboy at Work Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Yan Yan Zen You may call the cowboy horned and think him hard to tame. You may heap vile epithets upon his head, but to know him is to like him, notwithstanding his hard name, for he will divide with you his beef and bread. If you see him on his pony as he scampers over the plain, you would think him wild and woolly, to be sure, but his heart is warm and tender when he sees a friend in need though his education is but to endure. When the storm breaks in, its fury and the lightning's vivid flash makes you thank the Lord for shelter and for bed. Then it is he mounts his pony, and away you see him dash, no protection but the hat upon his head. Such is life upon a cow ranch, and the half was never towed. But you never find a kinder-hearted set Than the cattleman at home, Be he either young or old. He's a daisy from away back, Don't forget. When you fail to find a pony or a cow That's gone astray, Be that cow or pony wild or be it tame, The cowboy, like the drummer, And the bedbug, too, they say, brings him to you, for he gets there just the same. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Here's to the Ranger, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. Here's to the Ranger. He leaves his plow unfurrowed, he leaves his books unread, for a life of tented freedom by lure of danger led. He's first in the hour of peril, he's gayest in the dance, like the guardsman of old England or the beau sabreur of France. He stands our faithful bulwark against our savage foe, through lonely woodland places our children come and go, our flocks and herds untended, or hill and valley roam. The ranger in the saddle means peace for us at home. Behold our smiling farmsteads, where waves the golden grain. Beneath yon tree, 
earth's bosom was dark with crimson stain that bluff the death shot echoed of husband father slain god grant such sight of horror we never see again the gay and hardy ranger his blanket on the ground lies by the blazing campfire while song and tale goes round and if one voice is silent one fails to hear the jest they know his thoughts are absent with her who loves him best our state her sons confess it that queenly star-crowned brow has darkened with the shadow of lawlessness ere now and men of evil passions on her reproach have laid but that the ready ranger rode promptly to her aid he may not win the laurel nor trumpet tongue of fame but beauty smiles upon him and ranchmen bless his name then here's to the ranger past present and to come our safety from the savage the guardian of our home End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Muster Out the Ranger, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. Muster Out the Ranger. Yes, muster them out, the valiant band that guards our western home. What matter to you in your eastern land if the raiders here should come? No danger that you shall awake at night to the howls of a savage band. So muster them out, though the morning light find havoc on every hand. Some dear one is sick, and the horse is all gone, so we can't for a doctor send. The outlaws were in, in the light of the morn, and no rangers here to defend. For they've mustered them out, the brave true band, untiring by night and day. The fearless scouts of this borderland made taxes high, they say. Have fewer men in the capital walls, fewer tongues in the war of words. But add to the rangers, the living wall that keeps back the bandit hordes. Have fewer dinners, less turtle soup, if the taxes are too high. There are many other and better ways to lower them if they try. Don't waste so much of your money printing speeches people don't read. If you'd only take off what's used for that, t'would lower the taxes indeed. Don't use so much sugar and lemons. Cold water is just as good for a constant drink in the summer time and better for the blood. But leave us the rangers to guard us still, nor think that they cost too dear, for their faithful watch over vale and hill gives our loved ones not to fear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Cow Camp on the Range Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schampf Oh, the prairie dogs are screaming and the birds are on the wing. See the heel fly chase the heifer, boys. Tis the first class sign of spring. The elm wood is budding. The earth is turning green. See the pretty things of nature that make life a pleasant dream. I'm just living through the winter to enjoy the coming change. For there is no place so homelike as a cow camp on the range. The boss is smiling radiant radiant as the setting sun for he knows he's stealing glories for he ain't a cussin nun the cook is at the chuck box whistlin heifers in the green making baking powder biscuits boys while the pot is biling beans the boys untie their bedding and unroll it on the run for they are in a monstrous hurry for the supper's almost done here's your bloody wolf bait cried the cook's familiar voice as he climbed the wagon wheel to watch the cowboys all rejoice then all thoughts were turned from reverence to a plate of beef and beans as we graze on beef and biscuits like yearlings on the range to the dickens with your city where they herd the brainless brats on a range so badly crowded there ain't room to cuss the cat this life is not so sumptuous i'm not longing for a change or there is no place so homelike as a cow camp on the range. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Freckles, a fragment, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. He was little, and peaked, and thin and nary a no-account horse least that's the way you'd describe him in case that the beast had been lost but for single and double cussedness 
and for double-fired sin. The horse never came out of Texas that was halfway knee-high to him. The first time that ever I saw him was nineteen years ago last spring. Twas the year we had grasshoppers that come and et up everything. That a feller rode up here one evening and wanted to pin overnight. A small bunch of horses, he said. And I told him I guessed was all right. Well, the feller was busted, the horses was thin, and the grass round here kind of good. And he said if I'd let him hold here a few days, he'd settle with me when he could. So I told him all right, turn them loose down the draw, that the latch string was always untied. He was welcome to stop a few days if he wished and rest from his weary ride. Well, the cuss stayed around for two or three weeks till at last he was ready to go. And that cuss out yonder being too poor to move, he gimme. The cuss had no dough. Well, at first the darn brute was as wild as a deer and would snort when he came to the branch. And it took two cowpunchers on good horses, too, to handle him here at the ranch. Well, the winter came on and the range had got hard and my mustang commenced to get thin. So I fed him some and rode him around and found out old Freckles was game. For that was what the other cuss called him, just Freckles, no more or no less. His color couldn't describe it. Something like a paint shop in distress. Them was Indian times, young feller, that I am telling about. And off's the time I've seen the red man fight and put the boys to rout. A good horse in them days, young feller, would save your life. One that in any race could hold the pace when the redskin bands were rife. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Whose Old Cow? Collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Twas the end of Roundup, the last day of June. Or maybe July, I don't remember. Or it might have been August. Twas some time ago. Or perhaps twas the first of September. Anyhow, twas the Roundup we had at Mayu on the Lightning Rods Range near Cayo. There were some twenty wagons, more or less, camped about on the temporal in the canyon. First night we'd no cattle, so we only stood guard on the horses, somewhere near two hundred head. So we sidelined and hoppled and belled and we staked, loosed our hot rolls and fell into bed. Next morning, about daybreak, we started our work. Our horses, like possums, felt fine, each one tendin knittin', none trying to shirk. So the roundup got on in good time. Well, we worked for a week till the country was clean, and the bosses said, Now, boys, we'll stay here. We'll carve and we'll trim em and start out a herd up the east trail from old Abilene. Next morning all on herd, but two with the cut, and the boss on Paiute carving fine, till he rode down his horse and had to pull out, and a new man went in to clean up. Well, after each outfit had worked on the band, there was only three hundred of them left. When Nig Ad from LFD outfit rode in, a dictionary on earmarks and brands. He cut the two head out, told where they belong. But when the last cow stood there alone, Ad's eyes bulged, so he didn't know just what to say. Septon, boss, there's something here monstrous wrong. White folks smarter and add, but maybe I's wrong. But here's six months' wages dat I'll give to anyone'll tell me where I read dis mark, to who dis longhorned cow belong. Over slope in right ear and uh, under bill, left ear swaller fork and uh, under crop, hole punched in center and uh, jingle bob under half crop, and a slash and split. She's got O block and lightning rod, 946 and A bar 11, a terrapin and 97, rafter cross and a double prod, half circle A and diamond D, four cross L and three PZ, B W I bar X V V, bar N cross and A L C. So if none of you punchers claims dis cow, Mr. Stock Association needn't get alarmed. 
for one more brand more or less won't do no harm so old nigger addle just brand her now in the poem this recording is in the public domain old time cowboy collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by cindy tully tulsa oklahoma old time cowboy come all you melancholy folks wherever you may be I'll sing you about the cowboy whose life is light and free. He roams about the prairie, and at night when he lies down, his heart is as gay as the flowers in May in his bed upon the ground. They're a little bit rough, I must confess, the most of them at least. But if you do not hunt a quarrel, you can live with them in peace. For if you do, you're sure to rue the day you join their band. They will follow you up and shoot it out with you, just man to man. Did you ever go to a cowboy whenever hungry and dry, asking for a dollar and have him you deny? He'll just pull out his pocket book and hand you a note. They are the fellows to help you whenever you are broke. Go to their ranches and stay a while. They never ask a cent. And when they go to town, their money is freely spent. They walk straight up and take a drink, paying for every one. And they never ask your pardon for anything they've done. When they go to their dances, some dance while others pat. They ride their bucking broncos and wear their broad-brimmed hats. With their California saddles and their pants stuck in their boots, you can hear their spurs a-jingling, and perhaps some of them shoots. Come all soft-hearted tender feet, if you want to have some fun. Go live among the cowboys, they'll show you how it's done. They'll treat you like a prince, my boys, about them there's nothing mean. But don't try to give them too much advice for all of them ain't green. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Bucking Bronco, collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Bucking Bronco. My love is a rider, wild broncos he breaks, though he's promised to quit it just for my sake. He ties up one foot, the saddle puts on, with a swing and a jump, he is mounted and gone. The first time I met him, twas early one spring, riding a bronco, a high-headed thing. He tipped me a wink as he gaily did go, for he wished me to look at his bucking bronco. The next time I saw him, twas late in the fall, swinging the girls at Tomlinson's ball. He laughed and he talked as we danced to and fro, promised never to ride on another bronco. He made me some presents, among them a ring. The return that I made him was a far better thing. Twas a young maiden's heart, I'd have you all know, he's won it by riding his bucking bronco. My love has a gun, and that gun he can use, but he's quit his gun fighting as well as his booze, and he's sold him his saddle, his spurs, and his rope, and there's no more cow punching, and that's what I hope. My love has a gun that has gone to the bad, which makes poor old Jimmy feel pretty damn sad, for the gun it shoots high, and the gun it shoots low, and it wobbles about like a bucking bronco. Now all you young maidens, where'er you reside, beware the cowboy who swings the raw hide. He'll court you and pet you and leave you and go in the spring up the trail on his bucking bronco. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Pecos Queen, collected by John Lomax, 
Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Pecos Queen Where the Pecos River winds and turns in its journey to the sea, From its white walls of sand and rock striving ever to be free, Near the highest railroad bridge that all these modern times have seen, Dwells fair young Patty Moorhead, the Pecos River Queen. She is known by every cowboy on the Pecos River wide, they know full well that she can shoot that she can rope and ride she goes to every round-up every cow work without fail looking out for her cattle branded walking hog on rail she made her start in cattle yes made it with her rope can tie down every maverick before it can strike a lope she can rope and tie and brand it as quick as any man she's voted by all cowboys an a one top cow hand across the comstock railroad bridge the highest in the west patty rode her horse one day a lover's heart to test for he told her he would gladly risk all dangers for her sake but the puncher wouldn't follow so she's still without a mate end of poem this recording is in the public domain Chapo, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. Chapo, through rocky arroyas so dark and so deep, down the sides of the mountains so slippery and steep, you've good judgment, sure-footed, wherever you go. You're a safety conveyance, my little Chapo. Refrain. Chapo, my pony, Chapo, my pride, Chapo, my amigo, Chapo, I will ride. From Mexico's borders cross Texas Leno to the Salt Pecos River, I ride you, Chapo. Whether single or double or in lead of a team, over highways or byways or crossing a stream, you're always in fix and willing to go whenever you're called on my Chico, Chapo. You're a good roping horse. You were never jerked down when tied to a steer. You will circle him round. Let him once cross the string, and over he'll go. You sabe the business, my cow horse, Chapo. One day on the Lano a hailstorm began. The herds were stampeded, the horses all ran. The lightning, it glittered, a cyclone did blow. But you face the sweet music, my little Chapo. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Top Hand, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. While you're all so frisky, I'll sing a little song. Think a little horn of whiskey will help the thing along? It's all about the Top Hand when he busted flat, bummin' round the town in his Mexican hat. He's laid up all winter and his pocketbook is flat. His clothes are all tatters, but he don't mind that. See him in town with a crowd that he knows, rollin' cigarettes and smokin' through his nose. First thing he tells you, he owns a certain brand, leads you to think he is a daisy hand. Next thing he tells you about his trip up the trail, all the way to Kansas to finish out his tail. Put him on a hoss, he's a handy hand to work. Put him in the branding pen, he's dead sure to shirk. With his natural leaf tobacco in the pockets of his vest, he'll tell you his California pants are the best. He's handled lots of cattle. Hasn't any fears, can draw his sixty dollars for the balance of his years. Put him on herd, he's a cussin' all day. Anything he tries, it's sure to get away. When you have a round-up, he tells it all about. He's going to do the cuttin' and you can't keep him out. If anything goes wrong, he lays it on the screws, says the lazy devils were trying to take a snooze. When he meets a greener, he ain't afraid to rig, stands him on a chuck box and makes him dance a jig. Waves a loaded cutter, makes him sing and shout. He's a regular Ben Thompson when the boss ain't about. When the boss ain't about, he leaves his leggings in camp. He swears a man who wears them is worse than a tramp. Says he's not caring for the wages he earns, for dad's rich in Texas, got wagon loads to burn. But when he goes to town, he's sure to take it in. He's always been dreaded wherever he's been. He rides a fancy horse. He's a favorite man can get more credit than a common waddy can. When you ship the cattle, he's bound to go along, to keep the boss from drinking and see that nothing's wrong. Wherever he goes, catch on to his name. He likes to be called with a handle to his name. He's always primping with a pocket looking glass. From the top to the bottom, he's a bold jackass. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
California Trail, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Bristol Chilton, on November 5th, 2017. List all you California boys, and open wide your ears, for now we start across the plains with a herd of mules and steers. Now, bear in mind before you start that you'll eat jerked beef, not ham, and antelope steak, oh cuss the stuff, it often proves a sham. You cannot find a stick of wood on all this prairie wide. Whene'er you eat, you've got to stand or sit on some old bull hide. It's fun to cook with buffalo chips or mesquite green as corn. If I'd once known what I know now, I'd have gone around Cape Horn. The women have the hardest time who immigrate by land, for when they cook out in the wind, they're sure to burn their hand. Then they scold their husbands round, get mad and spill the tea, I'd have thanked my stars if they'd not come out upon this bleak prairie. Most every night we put out guards to keep the Indians off. When night comes round, some heads will ache, and some begin to cough. To be deprived of help at night, you know is mighty hard, but every night there's someone sick to keep from standing guard. Then they're always talking of what they've got and what they're going to do. Some will say they're content, for I've got as much as you. Others will say, I'll buy or sell, I'm damned if I care which. Others will say, boys, buy him out, for he doesn't own a stitch. Old rawhide shoes are hell on corns while tramping through the sands, and driving jackass by the tail, damn the overland. I would as leaf be on a raft at sea, and there at once be lost. John, let's leave the poor old mule, we'll never get him across. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bronk Peeler Song, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. Bronk Peeler Song I've been upon the prairie, I've been upon the plain, I never rid a steamboat, nor a double cinched up train, but I've driv my eight up to wagon that were locked three in a row, and that through blinded sandstorms, and all kinds of wind and snow. Chorus Goodbye, Liza, poor gal, goodbye, Liza Jane. Goodbye, Liza, poor gal. She died out on the plain. There never was a place I've been had any kind of wood. We burn the roots of bar grass and think it's very good. I've never tasted homemade bread, nor cakes, nor must like that. But I know fried dough and beef pulled from red-hot tallow fat. I hate to see the wire fence a-closin' up the range, and all this fillin' in the trail with people that is strange. We fellers don't know how to plow nor reap the golden grain, but to round up steers and brand the cows to us was all as plain. So when this blasted country is all closed in with wire, and all the top as trot grass is burnin' in Saul's fire, I hope the settlers will be glad when rain hits the land. And all us cow dogs are in hell with a set join hand in hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Deer Hunt Collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Tim Watkins. One pleasant summer day, it came a storm of snow. I picked my old gun and a hunting I did go. I came across a herd of deer, and I trailed them through the snow. I trailed them to the mountains, where straight up they did go. I trailed them o'er the mountains, I trailed them to the brim, and I trailed them to the waters, where they jumped in to swim. I cocked both my pistols, and underwater went, to kill the fattest of them deer, that was my whole intent. While I was under water, five hundred feet or more, I fired both my pistols, like cannons did they roar. I picked up my venison, and out of water came. To kill the balance of them deer, I thought it would be fun. So I bent my gun in circles, and fired round a hill. And out of three or four deer, ten thousand I did kill. Then I picked up my venison, and on my back I tied. And as the sun came passing by, I hopped up there to ride. The sun she carried me o'er the globe, so merrily I did roam, that in four and twenty hours I landed safe at home. And the money I received for my venison and skin, I'd taken it all to the barn door, and it would not all go in. And if you doubt the truth of this, I tell you how to know, 
Just take my trail and go my rounds as I did long ago. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tim Watkins. Windy Bill, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Michael Fascio. Windy Bill was a Texas man. Well, he could rope, you bet. He swore the steer he couldn't tie. Well, he hadn't found him yet. But the boys, they knew of an old black steer, a sort of an old outlaw, that ran down in the Malpays at the foot of a rocky draw. This old black steer had stood his ground with punchers from everywhere, so they bet old Bill at two to one that he couldn't quite get there. Then Bill brought out his old gray hoss, his withers and back were raw, and prepared to tackle the big black brute that ran down in the draw. With his brazen bit and his samstack tree, his chaps and taps to boot, and his old magway tied hard and fast, Bill swore he'd get the brute. Now first Bill sort of sauntered round, old Blackie began to paw, then threw his tail straight in the air and went drifting down the draw. The old gray plug flew after him, for he'd been eating corn, and Bill he piled his old magway right round old Blackie's horns. The old gray hoss he stopped right still, the cinches broke like straw, and the old magway and the samstack tree went drifting down the draw. Bill, he lit in a flint rock pile, his face and hands were scratched. He said he thought he could rope a snake, but he guessed he'd met his match. He paid his bets like a little man without a bit of jaw, and load old Blackie was the boss of anything in the draw. There's a moral to my story, boys, and that you all must see. Whenever you go to tie a snake, don't tie it to your tree, but take your dolly welters cordon to California law, and you'll never see your old rim fire go drifting down the draw. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wild Rovers, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Michael Fascio. Come all you wild rovers, and listen to me, while I retail to you my sad history. I'm a man of experience, your favors to gain. Oh, love has been the ruin of many a poor man. When you are single, and living at your ease, you can roam this world over, and do as you please. You can roam this world over, and go where you will, and slyly kiss a pretty girl, and be your own still. But when you are married, and living with your wife, you've lost all the joys and comforts of life. Your wife, she will scold you, your children will cry, and that will make Papa look withered and dry. You can't step aside, boys, to speak to a friend, without your wife at your elbow saying, what does this mean? Your wife, she will scold, and there is sad news. Dear boys, take warning. Tis a life to refuse. If you chance to be riding along the highway, and meet a fair maiden, a lady so gay, with red rosy cheeks and sparkling blue eyes, oh heavens, what a tumult in your bosom will rise. One more request, boys. Before we must part, don't place your affections on a charming sweetheart. She'll dance before you, your favors to gain. Oh, turn your back on them with scorn and disdain. Come close to the bar, boys. We'll drink all around. We'll drink to the pure, if any be found. We'll drink to the single, for I wish them success. Likewise to the married, for I wish them no less. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Life in a Half-Breed Shack Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org 
by larry wilson tis life in a half-breed shack the rain comes pouring down drip drops the mud through the roof and the wind comes through the wall a tenderfoot cursed his luck and feebly cried out ya refrain ya ya i want to go home to my ma ya ya this bloomin country's a fraud ya ya i want to go home to my ma he tries to kindle a fire when it's forty-five below he aims to chop at a log and amputates his toe he hobbles back to the shack and feebly cries out ya he gets on a bucking cayuse and thinks to flourish around but the buzzard head takes to bucking and lays him flat out on the ground as he picks himself up with a curse he feebly cries out ya he buys all the town lots he can get in the wrong end of calgary and he waits and he waits for the boom until he's dead broke like me he couldn't get any tick so he feebly cries out ya he couldn't do any work and he wouldn't know how if he could so the police run him up for a vag and set him to bucking wood as he sits in the guardroom cell he feebly cries out ya come all ye tender feet and listen to what i say if you can't get a government job you had better remain where you be then you won't curse you luck and cry out feebly ya End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Road to Cook's Peak, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Road to Cook's Peak. If you'll listen a while, I'll sing you a song and as it is short it won't take be long there are some things of which i will speak concerning the stage on the road to cook's peak on the road to cook's peak on the road to cook's peak concerning the stage on the road to cook's peak it was in the morning at eight forty five i was hooking up all ready to drive out where the miners for minerals seek with two little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak, on the road to Cook's Peak, with two little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. With my two little mules I jog along and try to cheer them with ditty and song o'er the wide prairie where coyotes sneak while driving the stage on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak, on the road to Cook's Peak, while driving the stage on the road to Cook's Peak. Sometimes I have to haul heavy freight. Then it is I get home very late. In rain or shine, six days in the week, tis the same little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak, on the road to Cook's Peak, tis the same little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. And when with the driving of stage I am through, I will to my two little mules bid adieu, and hope that those creatures so gentle and meek will have a good friend on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak? On the road to Cook's Peak. We'll have a good friend on the road to Cook's Peak. Now all kind friends that travel about Come take a trip on the Wallace stage route. With a plenty of grit, they never get weak. Those two little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak. Those two little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Arapaho or Buckskin Joe, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. Twas a calm and peaceful evening in a camp called Arapaho, and the whiskey was a runnin' with a soft and gentle flow. 
the music was a ringing and a dance hall cross the way and the dancers was a swinging just as close as they could lay people gathered round the tables a betting with their wealth and nearby stood a stranger who had come there for his health he was a peaceful little stranger though he seemed to be unstrung for just before he'd left his home he'd separated with one lung nearby at a table sat a man named hanky dean a tougher man says hanky buckskin chaps had never seen but hanky was a gambler and he was plumb sure to lose for he had just departed with a sun-dried stack of blues he rose from the table on the floor his last chip flung and cast his fiery glimmers on the man with just one lung no wonder i've been losin every bet i've made tonight when a sucker and a tenderfoot was between me and the light look here little stranger do you know who i am yes and i don't care a copper colored dam the dealer stopped their dealing and the players held their breath for words like those to hanky were a sudden flirt with death listen gentle stranger i'll read my pedigree i'm known on handling tender feet and worser men than thee the lions on the mountains i've drove them to their lairs the wildcats are my playmates and i've wrestled grizzly bears why the centipedes can't mar my tough old hide and rattlesnakes have bit me and crawled off and died i'm as wild as the horse that roams the range the moss grows on my teeth and wild blood flows through my veins i'm wild and woolly and full of fleas and never curried below the knees now little stranger if you'll give me your address how would you like to go by fast mail or express the little stranger who was leaning on the door picked up a hand of playing cards that were scattered on the floor picking out the five of spades he pinned it to the door and then stepped back some twenty paces or more he pulled out his life preserver and with a one two three four blotted out a spot with every shot for he had travelled with a circus and was a fancy pistol shot i have one more left kind sir if you wish to call the play then hanky stepped up to the stranger and made a neat apology why the lions in the mountains that was nothing but a joke never mind about the extra you're a bad shootin man and i'm a meek little child and harmless as a lamb End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rounded Up in Glory, collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I have been thinking today, as my thoughts began to stray, of your memory to me worth more than gold, as you ride across the plain, mid the sunshine and the rain, you will be rounded up in glory by and by. Chorus. You will be rounded up in glory by and by. You will be rounded up in glory by and by. When the milling time is o'er and you will stampede no more. When he rounds you up within the master's fold. As you ride across the plain with the cowboys that have fame. And the storms and the lightning flash by. We shall meet to part no more upon the golden shore when he rounds us up in glory by and by. May we lift our voices high to that sweet by and by, and be known by the brand of the Lord, for his property we are, and he will know us from afar when he rounds us up in glory by and by. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Drunkard's Hell, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Michael Monat. The Drunkard's Hell It was on a cold and stormy night, I saw and heard an awful sight. The lightning flashed and thunder rolled around my poor benighted soul. I thought I heard a mournful sound among the groans still lower down. That awful sight no tongue can tell is this, the place called Drunkard's Hell. I thought I saw the gulf below where all the dying drunkards go. 
I raised my hand and said to tell it was the place called Drunkard's Hell. I traveled on and got there at last and started to take a social glass. But every time I started, well, I thought about the drunkard's hell. I dashed it down to leave that place and started to seek redeeming grace. I felt like Paul. At once I'd pray till all my sins were washed away. I then went home to change my life and see my long-neglected wife. I found her weeping o'er the bed, because her infant babe was dead. I told her not to mourn and weep, because her babe had gone to sleep. Its happy soul had fled away, to dwell with Christ till endless day. I taken her by her pale white hand. She was so weak, she could not stand. I laid her down and breathed the prayer that God might bless and save her there. I then went to the temperance hall and taken a pledge among them all. They'd taken me in with a willing hand and taken me in as a temperance man. So seven long years have passed away since first I bowed my knees to pray. So now I live a sober life with a happy home and a loving wife. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ramblin' Boy, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. Ramblin' Boy, I am a wild and rovin' lad, a wild and ramblin' lad I'll be, for I do love a little girl, and she does love me. O oh, Willie, O oh, Willie, I love you so, I love you more than I do know, and if my tongue could tell you so, I'd give the world to let you know. When Julia's old father came this to know, that Julia and Willie were loving so, he ripped and swore among them all, and swore he'd use a cannonball. She wrote Willie a letter with her right hand, and sent it to him in the western land. Oh, read these lines, sweet William dear, for this is the last of me you will hear. He read those lines while he wept and cried, ten thousand times I wish I had died. He read those lines while he wept and said, Ten thousand times I wish I were dead. When her old father came home that night, He called for Julia, his heart's delight. He ran up the stairs and her door he broke, And found her hanging by her own bed rope, And with his knife he cut her down, And in her bosom this note he found, Saying, Dig my grave both deep and wide, And bury sweet Willie by my side. They dug her grave both deep and wide, and buried sweet Willie by her side, and on her grave set a turtle dove, to show the world they died for love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Brigham Young One, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. I'll sing you a song that has often been sung about an old Mormon they called Brigham Young. Of wives he had many who were strong in the lungs, which Brigham found out by the length of their tongues. Ritu-ral-lal-lu-ral. Oh, sad was the life of a Mormon to lead, yet Brigham adhered all his life to his creed. He said twas such fun, and true without doubt, to see the young wives knock the old ones about. Ritu-ral-lal-lu-ral. One day as old Brigham sat down to his dinner, he saw a young wife who was not getting thinner. When the elders cried out one after the other, by the holy she wants to go home to her mother, ritu rao lal lu rao Old Brigham replied, which can't be denied, he couldn't afford to lose such a bride. Then do not be jealous, but banish your fears, for the tree is well known by the fruit that it bears, ritu rao lal lu rao that I love one and all you very well know, then do not provoke me or my anger will show. What must be our fate if found here in a row, if Uncle Sam comes with his rowdy dow dow, ritu rao la la rao? Then cease all your quarrels and do not despair, to meet Uncle Sam I will quickly prepare. Hark I hear Yankee Doodle played over the hills. Ah, here is the enemy with their powder and pills, ritu rao la la rao. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Brigham Young Two, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. Now Brigham Young is a Mormon bold and a leader of the Roaring Rams, and shepherd of a lot of fine tub sheep and a lot of pretty little lambs. Oh, he lives with his five and forty wives in the city of the Great Salt Lake where they breed and swarm like hens on a farm and cackle like ducks to a drake. Oh, Brigham, Brigham Young, it's a miracle how you survive, with your roaring rams and your pretty little lambs and your five and forty wives. Number forty-one is about sixteen, number one is sixty and three, and they make such a riot how he keeps them quiet is a downright mystery to me. For they clatter and they chaw and they jaw, 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 and each has a different desire. It would aid the renown of the best shop in town to supply them with half they desire. Now Brigham Young was a stout man once, and now he is thin and old. And I am sorry to state he is bald on the pate, which once had a covering of gold. For his oldest wives won't have white wool, and his young ones won't have red. So with tearing it out and taking turn about, they have torn all the hair off his head. Now the oldest wives sing songs all day, and the young ones all sing songs. And amongst such a crowd he has it pretty loud, and are noisy as Chinese gongs. And when they advance for a Mormon dance, he is filled with the direst alarms. For they are sure to end the night in a tabernacle fight to see who has the fairest charms. Now if any man here envies Brigham Young, let him go to the Great Salt Lake. And if he has the leisure to enjoy his pleasure, he'll find it a great mistake. One wife at a time, so says my rhyme, is enough, there's no denial. So before you strive to be Lord of Forty-Five, take two for a month on trial. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Gray Mule, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Old Gray Mule I am an old man, some sixty years old, and that you can plainly see. But when I was a young man ten years old, they made a stable boy of me. I have seen the fastest horses that made the fastest time, but I never saw one in all my life like that old gray mule of mine. On a Sunday morn I dress myself, a goin' out to ride. Now, my old mule is as gray as a bird, then he is full of his pride. He never runs away with you, never cuts up any shine, for the only friend I have on earth is this old gray mule of mine. Now my old gray mule is dead and gone, gone to join the heavenly band with silver shoes upon his feet to dance on the golden strand and a poem this recording is in the public domain the fools of 49 collected by john lomax read for librivox.org the fools of 49 when gold was found in forty-eight, the people thought was gas, and some were fools enough to think the lumps were only brass. But soon they all were satisfied and started off to mine. They bought their ships, came round the horn in the days of forty-nine. Refrain. When they thought of what they'd been told, when they started after gold, that they never in the world would make a pile. The people all were crazy then, they didn't know what to do. They sold their farms for just enough to pay their passage through. They bid their friends a long farewell, said, Dear wife, don't you cry, I'll send you home the yellow lumps a piano for to buy. The poor, the old, and the rotten scows were advertised to sail from New Orleans with passengers, but they must pump and bail. The ships were crowded more than full, and some hung on behind and others dived off from the wharf and swam till they were blind. With rusty pork and stinking beef and rotten wormy bread, the captains, too, that never were up as high as the main masthead, the steerage passengers would rave and swear they'd paid their passage and wanted something more to eat besides bologna sausage. Then they began to cross the plain with oxen hollering, Ha! And steamers then began to run as far as Panama. 
and there for months the people stayed that started after gold and some returned disgusted with the lies that they'd been told the people died on every route they sickened and died like sheep and those at sea before they died were launched into the deep and those that died while crossing the plains fared not so well as that for a hole was dug and they was thrown in along the miserable plat the ships at last began to arrive and the people began to inquire they say that flour is a dollar a pound do you think it will be any higher and to carry their blankets and sleep outdoors it seemed so very droll both tired and mad without a cent they damned the lousy hell end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Rip and Trip, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. A Rip and Trip You go aboard a leaky boat and sail for San Francisco. You've got to pump to keep her afloat. You've got that by jingo. The engine soon begins to leak, but nary a thing to oil her. Impossible to stop the leak. Rip goes the boiler. The captain on the promenade, looking very savage. Steward and the cabin maid, fighting about a cabbage. All about the cabin floor, passengers lie seasick, steamer bound to go ashore, rip goes the physic. Pork and beans they can't afford, the second cabin passengers, the cook has tumbled overboard with fifty pounds of passengers. The engineer, a little tight, bragging on the mail line, finally gets into a fight, rip goes the engine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Happy Miner, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. The Happy Miner I'm a happy miner, I love to sing and dance. I wonder what my love would say if she could see my pants, with canvas patches on my knees and one upon the stern. I'll wear them when I'm digging here and home when I return. Refrain So I get in a jovial way, I spend my money free, and I've got plenty. Will you drink a lager beer with me? She writes about her poodle dog, but never thinks to say, Oh, do come home, my honey dear, I'm pining all the way. I'll write her half a letter, then give the ink a tip. If that don't bring her to her milk, I'll coolly let her rip. They wish to know if I can cook and what I have to eat, and tell me, should I take a cold? Be sure and soak my feet. But when they talk of cooking, I'm mighty hard to beat. I've made ten thousand loaves of bread the devil couldn't eat. I like a lazy partner so I can take my ease. Lay down and talk of golden home as happy as you please. Without a thing to eat or drink, away from care and grief, I'm fat and sassy, ragged too, and tough as Spanish beef. No matter whether rich or poor, I'm happy as a clam. I wish my friends at home could look and see me as I am, with woolen shirt and rubber boots and mud up to my knees, and lice as large as chili beans, fighting with the fleas. I'll mine for half an ounce a day, perhaps a little less, but when it comes to China pay, I cannot stand the press. Like thousands there, I'll make a pile, if I make one at all, about the time the Allied forces take Sir Bastopol. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The California Stage Company, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. The California Stage Company. There's no respect for youth or age on board the California stage, but pull and haul about the sheets as bedbugs do about the sheets. Refrain. They started as a thieving line in 1849. All opposition they defy, so the people must root hog or die. You're crowded in with Chinamen, as fattening hogs are in a pen, and what will more a man provoke is musty plug tobacco smoke. The ladies are compelled to sit with dresses and tobacco spit. The gentlemen don't seem to care, but talk on politics and swear. The dust is deep in summer time, the mountains very hard to climb, and drivers often stop and yell, Get out, all hands, and push up hill. 
the drivers when they feel inclined will have you walking on behind and on your shoulders lug a pole to help them out some muddy hole they promise when your fare you pay you'll have to walk but half the way then add aside with cunning laugh you'll have to push the other half end of poem this recording is in the public domain new national anthem collected by john lomax read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson my country tis of thee land where things used to be so cheap we croak land of the mavericks land of the puncher's tricks thy culture inroad pricks the hide of this peeler bulk some of the punchers swear that what they eat and wear takes all their calves others vow that they eat only once a day jerked beef and prairie hay washed down with tallow salves these salty dogs but crave to pull them out the grave just one kiowa spur they know they still will dine on flesh and beef the time but give us lord divine one hen-fruit stir our father's land with thee best trails of liberty we chose to stop we don't exactly like so soon to henceward hike but hell will take the pike if this don't stop end of poem this recording is in the public domain. End of Cowboy Songs and Other Frontier Ballads Collected by John A. Lomax